Today we'll hear songs by both Snarky Puppy and Duffer Yusuf. Ma, no, no, not at the same time. Why, why the hell would you do that? By the way, go check out this awesome collaboration I did with Andriy Vasilenko over on his channel. If you like the content that I do, I think you'd like the stuff on his channel as well. Hey there, you excellent group of individuals, what's up? In our never-ending pursuit of furthering our exploration into time and rhythm, we dive into these two examples by Snarky Puppy and Duffer Yusuf. And you can thank my patrons for picking these songs. Both examples use a composite time signature, and both use very interesting methods to smooth out these complex rhythmic structures. Starting off with the song Chapon's Vindaloo by Snarky Puppy featuring Vaisen Vasen. I'm sure I butchered at least 60% of that sentence. This song has a very interesting rhythmic structure that is built over a composite time signature, which is a sequence of meters glued together that create a bigger organized pulse pattern. So the time signature for this song, while you can call it 23, is better described as 779. So this composite time signature has three main centers. Calling this 23 beat cycle 779 does two things. First, it divides this huge number to chewable bite-sized pieces that you can digest, which provides a better overview of the inner works of the time signature. And second, once you determine the internal division of these separate meters, you get the main skeleton of the clave and the main rhythmic structure of the piece. Cool, but we'll focus more on the melodies. The melodies in this piece, beside being super beautiful, are very sparse and non-repetitive. And on the rhythmic side, these melodies aren't necessarily glued to the heavy points of this meter. The main melody is basically one big through-composed line that spans over 11 of these full bars. Some of the melodic ideas are divided differently than the meter, and some ideas accent different beats within the clave. This creates a continuous flow of awesomeness that blurs the complexity of the time signature. Check this out. This other section has a great trick as well. This new riff slash melody skips this downbeat and this downbeat. And on this one, they have an approach note, which is arguably the weakest note you can place on a downbeat. So this note leads to this note. And because the second one is the main note, the first one is just weaker. This adds to the mismatch between the stronger notes of the melody and the stronger notes of the meter, which blurs the intricate rhythmic nature of this time signature even more. Another cool thing to notice is timbre in dynamics. So the instrumentation choice of using flugelhorns instead of trumpets to support this super cool instrument called... I'm not gonna even bother. 
Anyway, that, in combination with the fact that this melody lives in this warm, mid-sweet spot of the range of this instrument, make this melody super relaxed and very soothing. And when all of this is executed with the sensitivity, musicianship and dynamics that these players bring to the table, it's just wow. This goes a long way in helping this piece being so captivating and convincing. Lastly, I want to highlight what I think was a missed opportunity in this song. So you know how by the nature of this riff, it has this uneven skip when it repeats, coming back from here to here. I feel there were two places in the song that the drummers or percussionists could have played some overriding pattern that would give this song a straight pulse to latch onto, even if it's for a short while. In this section, they start with what feels like a 4-4-ish backbeat, and I wish they continued it all the way through. And this part, when it opens up, starts with a very relaxed, consistent ride pattern that I really wished would just keep on going. Such an amazing piece, and super underrated from this album. Okay, great. Moving on to Dafer Youssef and his monster song, Odd Elegy. This piece has a similar time signature idea, but it's a bit longer, 39 beats. And in this song, this composite time signature is broken down in two different ways. For the intro, I feel it as two bars of 4-4 and one bar of 7-16, mostly because of the backbeat Mark Giuliana plays. Check this out. And then, once the solo section kicks in, we have a new way to divide this 39-beat pulse. Remember this form from the Snarky Puppy song? Well, here's the form for this one. Coincidence? Absolutely. By dividing this time signature in various ways, you strengthen the overall weight of the whole time structure and you support the bigger picture in a way. Obviously, these two different patterns start at the same place, so they share a downbeat. And by having more than one representation of the same time signature, you actually emphasize the most underlying pulse from this time signature or this meter, which is that big beat one. Does that make sense? Also notice how the first chord of the solo vamp is technically this C but it's also the highest note in the bassline sequence. It almost sounds like the solo starts here, because this is the lowest note. I'm not sure what the reason for this is, but it might have to do with the fact that this bass player is playing with an upright bass that has four strings, which means that the lowest C that he has is higher than the lowest F that he has. Mm -hmm. 
Regardless to the reason, this creates a circular motion that I love and gives this piece a flowing element that really smooths out this dreamlike atmosphere. Now, remember this video, where we manipulate these gravity centers? Assuming we tackle this the same way, we can look at these as short, 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 long, long. And listen to the beginning of Tigran's piano solo from this epic live performance. After a few rounds of this structure, he settles in in what sounds like 5-5-5-6-6. Five, 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 six, six. Such an on point solo. Let's try some other versions. These two songs are played by such top musicians and are a good reminder that complicated music doesn't necessarily have to sound complicated. We have enough things to worry about to also have music that sounds complex. Congregation, I said, can I get an amen? amen? That's it for today. I want to thank my patrons for your ongoing support and all of you viewers for helping me spread the word around. If you're new to the channel, I post weekly videos discussing rhythmic concepts and ideas through contemporary music breakdowns. If you like what I do, consider subscribing or giving a thumbs up. You can also support me directly through my Patreon page at patreon.com slash Thanks a lot, folks, and I'll see you next week.